I'm uh, Sebastian Ilo from uh, from Play Magnus, and I'm here with uh, the legend himself and the one and only Henry Carson, who is uh, whose genes is responsible for uh, a chess miracle. Well, you could half, say. Of, half the genes. <laughs> Half the genes. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thanks for the uh, for the correction. Well, do you want to introduce her, introduce yourself first before we take uh, the questions? Because you guys have been asking a lot of different questions, and we'll try to answer as many as possible in this uh, interview. Well, I'm a 58 year old engineer, soon 59, but I don't think I'll spend too much time on me as a private person because I'm here because I'm Magnus's dad, basically. So we should focus on on chess and a uh, question related to Magnus to chess in general. So yourself is not that a topic you want us to investigate further? Because well, you are one hell of a guy, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's leave it at that. That sounds good. Keep the curiosity, I think. Yeah. That's probably the best way to go. Well, you guys have been asking a lot of great questions. I, uh, I've been looking at all of them. Well. Uh, let's go. So the first question is from. Uh, this is quite funny because it's from a uh, a toy company who has like a huge channel on YouTube and they make really great videos. And they're asking you what were Magnus' favorite toys as a kid. Yeah, that's an interesting question because you know Magnus now is turned uh, he turned thirty uh, just before Christmas, but he still hasn't got a driving license. Although he was really into cars when he was one and two and three years old. And when he was two and a half, he knew all the car brands. And uh, so we were, if we were driving, he would point to the different cars the long distance because he, he even knew the brand and the model. And uh, so uh, cars and his uh, tractor, you know, Caterpillar. Uh, or John Smith, maybe, uh, or John, yeah, it's a, it's a famous uh, tractor anyway. He had uh, this model at home and he liked it a lot. He was also into what we in Norwegian call the Captain Sabeltan. He was a famous uh, pirate, so he had uh, equipment, uh, pirate equi equipment also, and his sisters uh, didn't like that very much. Uh, he was on Heck of a Pirate at five. So he uh, he knew all the car brands, the two and a half. Yeah. That is really impressive. And didn't he know all the municipalities in Norway at five? Yeah, or four and five. Uh, he was very much into countries, uh, number of populations, uh, all the municipalities in Norway, looking at the uh, relationship between size and population and geography, etc. And uh, also, especially the uh, municipality weapons or, uh, or brands in a way uh, that you see along the road that, that was very much something he, he, he liked. Erik Swapen, right? Uh, yeah. All oh, right. So um, I think I mentioned his main toys really as a child but he was quite a normal child uh, and uh, he, he, you, okay also at four he was very much into Legos he was building, starting with small Legos and then building bigger and bigger ones with up to 40, 50 page instructions for hours and hours really. Wow. He was uh, building these huge Legos uh, and then uh, he was starting to get interested in sports and reading about sports and sports results uh, at the age of five. And from then on uh, it was uh, mainly sports and later chess. Very impressive. Well, that's a great answer. Uh, I think you elaborated well on that. Obviously, considering that he uh, seemed very clever, considering that he could build Legos for hours and knew all the municipalities, all the car brands, etc. This uh, just means that he has a tremendous memory. Uh, when did you start believing that Magnus could pursue a career in chess? Because obviously, if you have a great memory, you're you're well set for a chess career. Well, that's an important topic because uh, at first I was right and then I was terribly wrong for some time. And that's an experience I like to share with parents, really, because Magnus had shown interests and traits 
that I thought would be well suited for chess, like when he was two, three, four years old. So I tried to teach him and his elder sister chess just before he turned five. And they liked chess and we played some typically in the autumn, like any uh, hobby or activity that you do with your children occasionally. But chess seemed very difficult for them. So fortunately, I would say, I was mistaken and I didn't have much ambition on their behalf because I really underestimated how difficult it is to, to learn chess for a child. And especially, you can learn how the pieces move, but to get two or more pieces to work together, that is very, very hard. So, frankly, we played some chess. Magnus was reasonably interested, but I didn't have any ambitions on his behalf until he started to get really interested on his own at seven and a half. So yeah, when he was four, I thought chess might be something for him, and then I, I, mean, I considered that a non-topic for several years afterwards, really, which was probably fortunate, although it was unbelievably stupid because he clearly has a talent for chess. <laughs> right. Right, and at what point did his skills surprise your own? Like, when did he become stronger than you? Because you are a very strong chess player yourself. <laughs> no, well, I'm a coffee house player, but I, I've been a happy amateur since I joined the club uh, at 15. And then I played for some years until family and job took over. And uh, when I started playing with Magnus, uh, when he really took up chess at seven and a half, eight years old, it just took about one year before he, or one and a half years maybe, before he surpassed me. And I remember the first time he beat me in Blitz chess at nine, or eight and a half maybe even. I was quite proud because uh, that hadn't gone very fast. And uh, I think, although I, I ended uh, higher on the uh, result, uh, resulting uh, list in one tournament when he was 11. I think in general he surpassed me uh, at 9. And uh, that was uh, of course very promising because uh, it uh, indicated that he might have some real potential in chess. And we also heard from other people like uh, Simon Agdestein when Magnus was 9 he saw one of his games, 9 and 2 months I think, and he said that oh he can be a grandmaster in 5 years. So uh, uh, he clearly showed some potential and uh, it was modern enough to beat me already back then. And what is the last time when you did beat him? Because a lot of people have been wondering that. Well, in five against five it was probably at nine. But uh, we played quite a lot when we were traveling in the autumn of 2003. So when I had one or one and a half minutes or he had one or one and a half minutes against mine, eight and a half or nine, then I could occasionally beat him <laughs> with this uh, time handicap. So, uh, yeah, you could say uh, I haven't beaten him for nearly 20 years. And that's not an issue really. I mean, now I could spend the whole day on the game and he could spend one second for every move and he would still beat me. And I think that's fantastic. You don't feel any frustration or it wasn't... Uh... Well, uh, as a chess player, hobby player, I can feel frustration on my own part, but not because my son is beating me. That, that's good news. But... Right. Yeah, Tward, uh, the creator of Stockfish, uh, once said that it was uh, just an amazing feeling when the engine did beat him the first time. I guess it's, uh, it's a similar feeling. Yeah, you could say. Yeah. So if you want to go, you can try Play Henrik, just released now in the uh, Play Magnus app, so feel free to challenge Henrik uh, yourself. I've, um, tried, uh, I've tried, but uh, it's pretty hard. Yeah, you mm. were uh, really tricky back myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even trickier, uh, I can say. Um, as obviously, as he is a, an incredible chess player, he has... Uh, uh, like a huge competition instinct, as we say in the Norwegian, mm -hmm. and that means that obviously he dislikes losing, which is, he has said. Uh, he has said that he he is a sore loser. He really hates it. Is there something that he hates more than losing? It just isn't that enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, uh, he uh, hates losing also in soccer, football, and uh, uh, other sp other sports in general. Any any games, he hates losing really. And uh, I thought it would be my task to teach him to lose with grace in chess. And uh, I tried a bit, but on the other hand, if you want to be a really top player, you, you have to hate losing. It has to really suck, otherwise uh, you don't have uh, the right mentality, I think, to continue to prove and improve and push yourself and reach uh, your highest potential. I absolutely agree. And uh, as a chess player myself, I can certainly relate to the pain of uh, losing. And it's a, it's a common thing that, uh, that like, why why does he get so angry? Why is he such a bad loser? Like, the TV kind of picture is like that. And people who do not really have a clue, they also, they also think that's very strange and he's such a bad loser. Uh, I remember it was quite a big deal in the Norwegian media at some point, and Magnus made a joke. If I don't... Uh, what did he say? Like, if I don't get better, like, happier when losing, I will get really angry if I don't manage to do it. <laughs> uh, but I think this is uh, the mentality you need to have, like, just as you said, because if you do not have this mentality, you will not improve. And also, I think media, they focus on uh, a few uh, situations where he's been especially outspoken about uh, his feelings or shown his feelings. Well, uh, normally you can tackle it reasonably well, like uh, like other top players, basically. And they're all human beings, right? <laughs> but I think that's uh, that's the mentality you need to have. Yeah. But I'm obviously biased because I'm a very sore loser myself. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> but um, now that we um, we have talked a little bit about that, uh, when did you realize that you could? Um, become like the best player in the world potentially or, or that he had or did you ever could you ever imagine that he would climb that high um, actually become the best yeah. player that has ever lived or well, a lot of people myself included I don't know if my memory serves me 100% correct but uh, um, I had the term or what it's called uh, at one point at least mentally to compare his development with Kasparov's already when he was nine and a half, I think. And at that point, he had started later, he was still maybe lagging somewhat, but at nine and a half, I thought uh, the sky is the limit, really. This could go anywhere, basically. Yeah, it really is uh, mind blowing to think just how can someone be that good in, uh, in chess? Well, I mean, you don't have to be that good, just a little bit better than the others. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm partly joking because it's, uh, of course, uh, the thought process is going into, co into high-level chess. It's, they're very complex. You need a lot of knowledge, uh, good intuition, quick mind and all these things, uh, good memory. But uh, somehow I if your conceptual understanding is just slightly better than the others, it might look it might look very impressive, but uh, the, the difference can be, be quite uh, small, really. And uh, Magnus has spent a lot of time on chess. I mean, when he was eight, nine, ten years old, etc., he talked about chess all the time. Still, I think chess is always at the back of his mind. And of course, when you spend a lot of time on the topic, uh, you, you improve and you mature and develop. And, uh, what seems uh, difficult for others can be relatively easy for you. Uh, but it still seems like a mystery. How could you become better from like, 2750 to 2850, let's say? Because <laughs> that's... Uh, well, uh, you know, Magnus, uh, he looked back uh, three or four years ago at his level as a 20-year-old. And after all, he was the top-ranked player at 20. And he, he was just uh, astounded by his lack of understanding of a lot of position at 20, uh, when he was 25, 26 years old. He couldn't necessarily play any better over the board, but his understanding had dramatically improved also from a very high level. So uh, I think also it's worth mentioning that the computers that have really shown us that uh, uh, there's uh, 
sky is the limit in chess, uh, really, that uh, there's a lot of uh, room for improvement. And even at 2800, you make a lot of mistakes that a computer would consider basic. Right, yeah, and even they make uh, yeah, yeah. mistakes. Yeah. Even now, they tend to beat each other, yeah. which is uh, just uh, truly incredible, yeah. uh, really. So a few people have asked uh, how Magnus was as a, as a kid. Did he have the same sense of humor as he have now? Was he as funny as now? Well, uh, of course, people change, but uh, we had a lot of fun with the kids when they were, when they were young. Uh, Magnus has always had a lot of humor. He's maybe more serious uh, as an adult, simply because uh, there's a lot of focus on him. And uh, people expect a lot from him. And he's, uh, of course, aware of his position when he's interviewed or talking to fans or playing chess at high level in tournaments. So that uh, he, he's probably uh, more fun in private than in public. Yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually the case too, because, of course, public, you need to have a certain figure. But we've seen him joke around a lot in his banters and stuff. So yeah. maybe we've seen this private side there. Yeah, it's part of it at least, yeah. Yeah, because he has a great sense of humor, at least. Yeah. Typical dad jokes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has he learned them from you, or...? Well, you know, um, there was an old saying... Uh, um, was it Mark Twain, I think, who said that... Uh, amazingly, when he was 15, his father was a complete moron and idiot. Uh, but when Mark was 20, his father had, became, uh, had become quite normal. And uh, uh, I think that's uh, showing you that uh, although children not, don't necessarily want to be like their parents, they develop some of the same traits and uh, humor and, uh, and characteristics. So uh, I'm afraid that some of the bad jokes Magnus are making, he might have uh, been inspired uh, by me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and some people have asked also if Magnus had um, an immediate talent or did his brilliancy just come over time? Immediate talent? Yeah, like immediate talent, like oh, he, he, he learned the game and then he was no, as incredibly... I, as I mentioned, uh, <laughs> chess was very hard for these uh, kids when he was four and a half, five years old, his sister was six. So, kind of, uh, I, I think, uh, if anything, compared to other so-called geniuses, Magnus uh, considers himself to be a slow learner. But in a way, he didn't, doesn't stop learning. He keeps, keeps going. And then, if you keep going, you get better. And just spend enough time there, you'll, you'll get uh, quite good in there. So, my impression was not that he was uh, picking up chess that early quickly, uh, early on. And in fact, uh, one of his, uh, not trainers, but one of the people we talked to early on, when Magnus was nine, he knew uh, about Magnus's overall level of knowledge within chess, like uh, opening knowledge and all the books he had read. And he told me in private that he was a bit surprised that Magnus didn't show even more promise or better results because he knew so much. But I think that uh, that didn't worry me at all because I, I understood. I think that uh, uh, even if you know a lot of th stuff, to 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 bring that into motion, kind of, and to use it actively during a chess game, that's a process that requires time, and maturing, etc. So that uh, no, Magnus was not a uh, particularly uh, quick learner early on, but he was. I think his main ability was this uh, ability to focus and be interested and curious and continue to pursue uh, knowledge and understanding. And that's the key, basically. Right, right. And did he have any other interests when he was uh, a kid? Because I know he's always been fond of sports and I believe yeah. he probably was that from the very beginning, wasn't he? Yeah, he was interested in, in, in sport, definitely. He was, he was quite doing well at school early on, before he lost interest a, a bit after, after some time. But, so he, he was good with numbers, geography, history, 
he knew a lot about politics early on, etc. But uh, more and more, really, sports uh, been his main interest. I think because it's an uh, obvious and uh, exciting way to occasionally focus on something else than chess, to get his mind away from chess. He can look at other sports. And he's quite into fantasy football, as you may, may know. He's spending a lot of time on that, and that's a great stress reliever, I think, uh, also during tournaments, for instance. Right. Yeah, he did have uh, the number one spot at some point in the world. Yeah, a couple of times, uh, maybe, or once maybe, uh, tw uh, last year, yeah. Yeah, that's of course an, an incredible achievement. And, uh, well, Magnus is uh, quite a funny guy, he's known for his banter, and he does have this banter with some other world-class players, like Anish Giri. What, uh, what do you think about that? that? Well, uh, Anish, uh, he's been historically commenting a lot on things Magnus has said and done, and They've had lots of fun, I think. At some point, uh, it seemed to get more serious. Uh, uh, but I, I don't know, I, I don't understand really uh, what's going on. Uh, to me, uh, uh, social media and banter is, is all about fun, and I hope that's uh, the same for everyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> these two guys aren't known as being the most serious guys in the world. <laughs> well, I don't know. And uh, do you have any funny stories about Magnus as a kid? Any fun stories you want to uh, you want to share? Because even I am curious about that. I must admit. Well, fun stories. I don't know. Yeah, of course I have. But uh, frankly, uh, there's a one story that is not particularly fun, although it ended well. Uh, we went. Uh, my parents had a hut up in the mountains, and we went uh, to a lo local mountain top and on one side of the mountain this was very steep and Magnus was sometimes uh, he was a good chip so he was sometimes a bit ahead of the family and uh, on one of these trips he got lost basically we, we couldn't find him and it turned out he had taken a different route going back from the top than we had so when we were looking for him he was gone past us so I spent some time going up and down the steep hill, uh, which was quite scary basically, on, on the other side, looking for him as uh, fearing a worst case scenario. And But then in an hour or so, when the others had returned to the hut, I, I could go out on the brink and I could see they were waving on the, on the roof of the hut. And then I understood, uh, and I could also see or suspect that he, he was back at that. That, that was a bit scary, really. And uh, fortunately, we've not had uh, any serious uh, episodes or things happening to the children, any of the children. So uh, that's why this relatively trivial episode of him getting lost in the mountain for, for an hour or two was, uh, was something that really sticks in my mind. Yeah, I can imagine. Great story. <laughs> Happy that it got, uh, got to a great ending. Otherwise, the chess world would have been slightly different on yeah. this day today. <laughs> and, um, well, you kind of talked about this too, that did you kind of make him study chess or is this just something you did because he wanted to? Because we have this Russian dad, at least since my dad's also Eastern European, kind of forces the chess on you, like, you got to study that, you got to study this, etc. Uh, my dad was kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, and how were you? No, well, I mean, okay, I, uh, there's a couple of answers I could give to that. On the one hand, the obvious answer is that, uh, no, of course not, I mean, uh, it would never work with Magnus, because he uh, he's always been very independent, pursuing his own interests, and if I had tried to push him, uh, it would never work, and maybe the success is partly, or uh, at least, 
Yeah, partly, partly because uh, we didn't uh, kind of uh, dampen or destroy his interest for chess in any way by pushing him in any specific direction. And I also learned when he was uh, nine, uh, we were looking through one of his games and uh, I was trying to tell him about uh, the pawn patterns and uh, opposite color bishops. And then the master player came over and he said, no, that's wrong, he said. It's not like that. And then, and then I thought, uh, well, that's not the first time that I've said something uh, wrong about chess to magnus. But it will be the last time. So at that point, when he was nine, I, I really completely stopped trying to teach him anything that had to do with chess. Uh, and he was also quite close to my level already at nine and a month or two. So it made sense anyhow. But the other way of interpreting things, uh, that is that, well, parents, they have a lot of influence on children. So if you're subtle about it, maybe you can influence your children uh, without them even uh, knowing too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it did work out, though. Great strategy. <laughs> no, I just, well. I leave that to the audience to, to guess and philosophize. Yeah, because there have been several approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, the Udit Polgar strategy in particular is uh, quite different, yeah. but it yeah. did work out as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, how much did he study? Did he, did he spend time with his family or maybe it compromised his time with his family that he just studied well, chess all day? Well, he tried to combine it. So typically after school, he, he did some chess or some, some out, outdoor sports and during dinner he would very soon start to eat ha at his own table so that he could uh, have the chess board and, or, and possibly a book by the, his side. So he would eat dinner at the same time but at two different tables and he, he would uh, be doing chess while eating basically. And uh, my wife and I we were being slightly worried about this development, but on the other hand, uh, you could ask him things. He was, and it, the, the tables were close by, and it was just a convenient way of allowing him to pursue one of his, uh, at that time, several interests, uh, because he was really delving into things uh, at an early age. And then uh, we didn't think we should stop him, basically. So you decided to just be his backbone, is this entire time? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course it's a dream come true if you can pursue your interests and hobbies and make a living from it and uh, never have to kind of uh, suffer at work or, <laughs> or uh, uh, do a lot of things that you don't really appre don't appreciate uh, doing really. So he's been fortunate in that sense. Right. And uh, well, the natural question is then, uh, what would he do? If, what would he do if it wasn't for chess? Would he pursue a normal career, perhaps, or maybe he would pursue different sport? Early on, he said that well, he would really have liked to be a top uh, footballer, and later on, he said that well, no, I'm happy being a top chess player. That's it's fine. Um, he was very much into numbers, and uh, as I said, I think. Uh, Another occasion that uh, I think he could have been a decent stock trader <laughs> <laughs> if he had been interested, really interested in that. But uh, being a top chess player, I mean, why uh, why should we worry about what he alternatively could have done? He, although chess is a, a game and a hobby, it's also something that brings an enormous amount of enjoyment to audiences and uh, people following the games. So uh, I think he's doing something very worthwhile uh, with his life. Yeah, obviously, well, with that memory, the sky's the limit. So no matter if it wasn't chess, it probably would have been something where he could have used know. those abilities. I don't know. It's finest. Uh, mm -hmm. There's numerous <laughs> possibilities. No. Very difficult to, to know, but that's a common question. So. <laughs> But all right, a uh, pretty fun question I did uh, made me laugh a bit, and that is, are you more proud of Magnus than your other kids? Because this is kind of a, I don't know, it's, 
it's a tough situation, uh, I, I guess, but I at least find myself some, at least sometimes liking some of my siblings more than the other, and some of my yeah. family members in general. Well, of course, it's an interesting question, and it's a relevant topic now because I like, I know in the Netflix series, The Crown, this has been a recurring topic uh, in, in, the last, uh, in the last season. And uh, well, frankly, for me and my wife, um, we've uh, really loved our children, all our children, so much that uh, um, you could say that uh, when when you really love all your children, uh, they uh, the feelings you have for them are at such a level that uh, being uh, occasionally extremely proud of one of them, in particular doesn't diminish your relationship to the others. It just enhances this feeling of uh, th 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 things are good, uh, life is good, and uh, you are, you are uh, happy with, uh, with kind of uh, the sum of, uh, of uh, what's happening to you and your family and your children, etc. So fortunately for me, that's not uh, uh, much of a relevant topic. and. Uh, Anyhow, you, you would have to ask uh, my daughters, I think, if they experience something different in this area than what I'm expressing. But, uh, of course, uh, when there's a lot of focus on Magnus specifically, uh, you, you might have more feelings about him for a brief period of time, occasionally. While again, I'm not sure that's relevant, really. And I know also his sisters, who do very well on their own and you know, great human beings, they're also proud of their brother. So I don't, uh, I, I try not to think of this as a problematic topic at all, basically. We're just in a fortunate situation as a family. So it doesn't make different that he's like the world champion, just. Well, my wife is very down to earth. So like to, to her, he's just Magnus. I mean, uh, with his traits, which is he has had from a young age, and whether he's world champion or not, I mean, uh, well, um, eat your supper anyway, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. So it's, uh, I think you shouldn't philosophize too much about uh, uh, the concept of uh, what it implies to be a world champion. I mean, he's a human being, enjoy, enjoying and what he's doing and is very successful what he's doing, but it's it's all supposed to be fun and meaningful. But it must be a quite a feeling to be the father of a world champion. Yeah, of course, fantastic. And uh, but it's become it's uh, become that way quite gradually. Although for Magnus, it's uh, it's the only uh, thing he knows basically. He, he's the world champion. Well, what are you? I mean, uh, that's his life. Yeah. Well, for me, as a hobby player, I have quite a different perspective of uh, uh, world champions than I have now, that my son has become one. But uh, that has also happened relatively gradually, although, I, of course, I've had to pinch my arm occasionally. Uh, and uh, maybe even now I say I pinch my arms, arm occasionally, but uh, now I'm, I'm quite used to it. I know that he's very good at chess. And just tremendous success. It's been um, a fantastic journey, and uh, uh, we are very fortunate. My wife, I, the family, Norwegians. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but uh, it's it's really yes. Well, that's that's our life now. And of course, I'm happy about it. Yeah, it, uh, I can't imagine how how it would how it would be but uh, <laughs> but yeah he, we certainly earn him a lot of uh, gratitude uh, Norway and how he has brought Norwegian chess forward uh, Norwegian chess is now shown on TV every time he plays a tournament basically yeah. we didn't <laughs> and it's all thanks it. to him we so, didn't see that coming yeah <laughs> yeah it's really it is and uh, it is incredible so uh, thanks to you <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say and uh, how's your style of chess compared to him? Like, did your style 
uh, playing chess, did it influence him, do you think? Fortunately, not much. I'm a, really a coffee house player, playing for tricks, swindles. If I, uh, if I can win on time and bits, that's fine. I mean, uh, well, Magnus is more a classical uh, positional player uh, at heart. So, uh, no, fortunately, we're quite different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And what about... Um... And he's, of course, at a completely different level. <laughs> that should be added. And what about physically? Like, uh, let's say you, 30 years ago, would you beat him in a fight now? Oh, that's a good question. No, not 30 years ago. Maybe now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, a fight now, he's... Uh, He's uh, quite strong and uh, he, uh, I, I'm tall and thin and maybe he has some of his build from his uh, grandfathers who were more uh, physical. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but are you, would you say that you're better than any sports? Well, Norwegian t Television 2, they asked me about this. and. Maybe if we go uh, many, many, many hours on cross-country skiing, he will finally <laughs> be at the back at some point. But uh, generally, of course, he's better than his old father at most. Yeah. That, and that's fine. Right. Magnus once said that you made him believe that chess is more fun than video games. How did you achieve that? <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Well, uh, we were a bit restrictive on video games with the kids because uh, we thought we should limit uh, the number of hours per day, etc. Spent on the computer early on. And uh, somehow Magnus got the impression that while playing chess was okay, ordinary video games was not considered as uh, uh, useful or uh, let's say helpful training or things to spend your time on and somehow that uh, that worked out well. <laughs> well there you go. <laughs> uh, if Magnus was candy what flavor would he be? <laughs> Well, if he, he, he was an animal, uh, he's, uh, he wanted to be a crocodile, so maybe he would be uh, peppers, maybe? Chili peppers? <laughs> <laughs> and is that candy? Yeah, well, you can get candy with chili peppers. Yeah, yeah do you have the red hot chili peppers? <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, okay, that's, <laughs> And uh, how's his uh, music taste in oh, comparison poor, to yours? Poor. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. He, he's really into music. Although, maybe a bit old fashioned. I think he liked uh, music from the 80s, 90s, etc. Also, modern music. And uh, he's not that much into classicals, uh, probably. So, that's a topic we still have to cover. And with movies, I guess? Uh, he knows a lot of uh, movies. And so he's, uh, you have to ask him basically. I think he listened to a lot of stuff uh, when it comes to movies. Well, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I uh, certainly uh, have been uh, filled in with a lot of uh, info, a lot of interesting uh, info. You, you won't tell anyone, right? This <laughs> just between no, us. don't worry, this it's is just uh, between, the two just of between us. us. Yeah. Don't have to worry, will not be shown anywhere. Uh, do you have anything to add? Do you want to well, tell us a fun fact about yourself, perhaps? No, there's uh, no fun about me. <laughs> I'm a very serious guy. So. But uh, Sebastian, you, you've done a great job. It's been a, oh, thank you. a thrill being here with you. And uh, I look forward to see your next uh, interview. Yeah, it might be one of your daughters, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Got to interview the whole family at some point. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, I, I imagine that your wife will be the toughest one. <laughs> yeah, she's. Uh, that'll be difficult. But uh, it is what it is. <laughs> well, thank you so much, uh, Henrik Carlsen, and um, I'm sure we'll see you around soon. Remember that you can play Henrik and uh, play Magnus app right now. That is uh, one hell of a ride. He is uh, a tactical opponent.
quite quite strong, and he certainly was a great player in his prime. <laughs> so <laughs> complete nonsense. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> So uh, that's a great challenge. Uh, remember that, and as always, we'll see you soon here at Play Magnus.